In addition to the three access modifiers that we've just learned, there's another modifier that we should talk about, and it is with the keyword static, and it's a static modifier, and we can modify an attribute or function with it, and we can use it even in conjunction with our three access modifiers. So it really is different because we can use both together. Let me give you an example of its usage in a class, and then we can talk about how it works. I'm just going to go to TextMate and open up a new window. I'll save that as static modifier PHP. And then let's put my PHP tags in here. So an example of using it in a class would be like this. We have a class student, and it has a variable, total students. And I've declared it as being static. Then I've got function welcome students, which is also declared as being static. So what is static? Well, if you remember back to chapter two, when we were talking about functions that had static variables in them and we used them like a counter inside there because we said that they would stick around, well, these kind of work the same way. Now, standard attributes in a class stick around as long as the instance is around. But with static, the big difference is that the attribute or the method is around even if there is not an instance. Let me just repeat that one more time to make it clear. We have access to both total students and the method welcome students, even if we don't have an instance. It breaks the rule that we were talking about earlier when we were talking about creating instances in order to have these things. Static allows us to do that because the static variable is tied to the class itself, not to an instance. In other object-oriented languages, this is often referred to as a class method or a class attribute. Now, in PHP, we just simply call it static. We say it's a static method or a static attribute. Because we don't need to create an instance, the way that we refer to them is a little different because we need to specify which class we're talking about. So we need to first say what class. When we do it with an instance, we've created that class. We have an instance of that class, so everything gets directed to the right place. But we need to be specific. What if we had two classes that both had an attribute called name? How do we know which one we're talking about? So we'll need to specify student. And then, instead of the arrow notation, which is used for instances, we're going to use two dots. And we'll talk a little bit more about these dots in the next movie. For now, just know when we're not dealing with an instance, we use the two dots. And then, the dollar sign total students. And just so that you can really compare the difference, what we normally would have is something like student equals new student. And then we would be able to say echo student, and then whatever value. Let's say it was total students. Let's say that that was a non-static method. Now, that's what it would normally look like. So if you notice here, this call knows where to go find its code because it knows what class it belongs to. So it knows where total students is located. But if we don't have an instance, then we also need a way to tell PHP where it can find this variable, right? We might have a lot of classes, and if the name of the variable is something like first name, how does it know where to go find it? How does it know which class to look in? So we're going to need to reference the class. And then, because we don't have an instance, we use two dots instead of the arrow. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit more about those two dots. But for now, instances are going to use that arrow notation, right? Dash with the greater than sign. And then instead, we're going to say total students after the two dots. So take a second and notice the differences there. Notice that the dollar sign is here. There was not a dollar sign here. This is an instance. This is a static call. Okay. So let's go ahead and just try that out so that you can see it working. Uh, go into Firefox and we'll open up static modifier. There we are. It comes back with zero, which is the value of students. And then let's go ahead and just put br tag at the end. And then we can do the same thing with echo student colon colon welcome students. And we'll do our br tag again. And that's how we call a method, still with the double parentheses after, but also still using these two colons in between the two. So if we do that, you'll see that that comes back just as well. And we can work with these just like we would normal values. You see here that I've done welcome students and I've passed in greetings as a variable to it. You'll see here that I've got a student. I set it equal to one and then student total students. So they work just like normal attributes and methods. Now the other thing that's really different about working with static methods is that 
because it's not an instance, we can't use this. So normally we would do something like this. It's a public function add student, and then we would increment it this way. But we can't do that. We don't have access to this. In fact, I'm going to put a note up here at the top that says with static methods, you can't use this. Okay, and that's going to be a good reminder for us. So instead, we need another way to refer to this. So I'm going to make this method static also. So since we can't use this, we can still use this double dot notation. There we go, student colon colon, total students, and then we need a dollar sign too. An even better way to do it though is self. Okay, so when you use this, you're talking about this instance. When you're talking about self, you're talking about the class. Now you may be wondering, do we need static in front of this one? Can it just be a public method? It's best for you to keep your static attributes and your static methods completely separate from your instance methods, the normal ones that we're working with, the non-static ones. That's how they're meant to be used, is separately. And in fact, if in your PHP error settings in php.ini, if you had it set to strict, it will complain if you call a non-static method in a static context. In other words, you start mixing between them, and you have a static method that calls something that's non-static and so on, you'll start getting errors. So in general, all the static methods go together. They only call other things that are static. All of the non-static ones belong to instances, and you can make reference to them. That doesn't mean that you can't ever use them. You just have to be careful about how you do it. The last point that I want to make is that static variables are shared throughout the inheritance tree. Take a look at the code that I just pasted in there. I've just got a simple classes called 1, 2, and 3. There's a static variable called foo that gets inherited into all three of them. And I just set a couple of values for foo, 1, 2, and 3. So if we echo those back, what will the results be? And the answer is 3 for all of them. Now that may be a little bit counterintuitive. You may think that each class should have its own. But that's not true. It's defined once. And whenever we talk to class 2, it actually is referencing that same static value that's in class 1. So just be careful about that because that trips a lot of PHP developers up. So I'm just going to save it and let's just try it one last time just to make sure we do get those threes at the bottom. And that shows us that static variables are shared between parents and their children. So you might be still wondering, when would you use static variables and methods? And it's when you don't actually have an instance. Let's say that we're talking not about a particular student, but about the total number of students that have been created. That would be something that we could keep track of in a static variable. We might also have some very basic class information. Let's say that we wanted to keep the student types in there, and we might have freshman, sophomore, junior, senior as being the different types of students that could be chosen. That could be in the static method that we would have access to all the time. The student class could report back to us about what kinds of students there could be, even if we don't have a student. Now I said earlier that we would talk a little bit more about this double colon. Let's do that in the next movie.